Do you wonder if others are dealing with the same project management challenges as you? Not sure where to turn for guidance and leadership? Office Hours are in session as we discuss project management and PMOs with global leaders, hearing their story and learning their secrets to success. Our goal is to empower you and help you elevate your PMO and project management career to new heights. Welcome back to Project Management Office Hours with your host, PMO Joe. Welcome, everyone, to Project Management Office Hours. We're the number one live project management radio show in the U.S., and I guess for that matter, maybe the world. Uh, And we're broadcasting to you from the Phoenix Business Radio X studios in Tempe, Arizona. I'm your host, PMO Joe, and for the next hour, we'll be talking project management and leadership uh, with our special guest, and a special guest he is, as we have a show of first today. Well, this is the first show of 2021. Uh, we're super excited that we want to wish everybody a happy new year. Uh, it's also a new season for us, and we have an amazing lineup of fantastic leaders planned for all of you. Uh, and we have our first guest from Africa. I'm so excited to be joined today by Billy Moape. Billy, joining us from Zambia. Welcome. Thank you for joining us, Billy. Thank you very much, Joe. I'm so excited to be here. And if you can take a moment just to say hello to the listeners and introduce yourself to them uh, so they know a little bit more about you. Hello to our listeners across from across the globe. My name is Billy Samuel Moape. I recently learned to introduce myself in a summarized way. I introduced myself as an agile parent, and that's about it. But to be more relevant to the conversation we're having today, I'm a project management consultant from Africa, to be specific, Zambia. And what's great, uh, you know, the, the world moves in mysterious ways. Uh, we celebrated Christmas um, a couple of weeks ago, and my parents who live in New York, I'm in Arizona, they had sent uh, my family a gift, uh, and it's a game. We love to play games. Uh, and I had never heard of this one. It's called uh, Shut the Box. Uh, and it's a fun dice game that's quick to play, easy to play. Um, you, four people, you roll a dice, and you have to select a series of numbers to try to close them. And as you close the the numbers down, you shut the box. Um, and since I had never heard about it before, and I've got my inquisitive nature, I said, I'm going to research this game a little bit. It turns out it was, I think, invented in the 1500s in France. Um, and it's a really, really popular game in Zambia. And I said, oh my, this is, is how ironic. I have my first guest of next year is coming from Zambia. So I had sent Billy a message and I'm like, have you ever heard of this game? Uh, and Billy shared with me, of course, that you had and you've played that game and uh, actually um, created your own dice right out of uh, avocado seeds. Uh, so fun a way the world connects us all in the strange ways that we can connect. Uh, Billy and I connected I don't know, last year and instantly hit it off, um, and I'm so honored to have him on the show today to share his story. Uh, but before we jump into that, something else Billy and I are collaborating on, I had teased at the end of last year on our show that I had a new project in the works, and I was going to be letting everybody know about that soon. So today is our public announcement of a new website called The PMO Leader. So www.thepmoleader.com. And again, a a bit of uh, irony in the world. A week ago, I was out on LinkedIn. Somebody had tagged me on a post. Uh, The the post was from a a second connection of mine, Rachel Bergiglia. And and I apologize if I pronounce her name wrong, but the post said, Hi, is anyone aware of an association for PMO leaders? I'm looking to join a group that meets regularly to talk all things PMO. And at the time, we were putting the final touches on our website, The PMO Leader. So we have a community that we're building for PMO leaders to join together around the world and to be able to discuss leadership, project management, the agile techniques, all of all things related PMO project management. Um, in that LinkedIn post, there were several comments who tagged uh, me. They tagged Lindsay Scott from the UK, who's been a guest on the show, Uh, Americo Pinto and the PMO Global Alliance. And our site, the PMO Leader, is similar 
in some extent, to the PMO flash mob and the PMO Global Alliance. But while those groups are, uh, we'll call them more closed in nature, ours is more open and inclusive to everybody throughout the world. So on our site, uh, we it is a membership site where we can have community members join and become members for peer-to-peer interaction and discussions and forums. We're also offering professional development uh, from our industry. It's a commerce-based site so that uh, professional trainers from around the world will have access to the community. We have content uh, for free with blogs and podcasts and books from all of our industry experts to be able to have a library for you as a PMO leader or team member to be able to go access. Uh, The technology solutions and vendors around the world are partnering with us to have their products available for us to understand, review, and seek out if necessary. Our professional services firms, the consultants that help us around the world, are available on the site, as well as professional speakers. Um, And it's not just my vision, right? This site, uh, as I mentioned, Billy, is is part of this. We have an advisory board of global community members that are uh, providing, helping provide the leadership, the vision for the site. So it's not just my vision. Uh, Fatima Abuchi from Australia, Billy, of course, from Zambia, Leonardo Torres from Spain, Um, And we look to expand that with at least one more member as well. So we have a global advisory board working to ensure that our our vision is really going to be met for the community itself. We're at an MVP portion of the site, right? So this is, uh, we are launched, but we're not really our hard launch yet. The site is up, it's available. You can go out and sign up today, become a member. You can sign up for courses You can read books, you can see blog posts, you can get podcasts. I mean, there's a ton of information out there. But no, this is just the infancy of this long journey we have to build this global community. Also, because of we're just launching, anybody who wants to go out and sign up for a membership today, there is a free membership. uh, But if you want one of the paid memberships, you can use the discount code, a coupon code, PMOH which stands for Project Management Office Hours, so P-M-O-H, and you'll get a 20% discount uh, off of that. We're in COVID world right now. I know a lot of people have had financial hardships um, and having funds may be at a uh, a limited capacity at this time. So certainly that discount, I think, can help for everybody. So Billy, I'm super excited to have you as an advisor uh, on the website and getting your vision to help us not, of course, not just in, in Africa and African countries, but across the world uh, as a contributor, as an advisor, and as a leader within that site. Very excited to be on board, Joel. Uh, in addition to Billy, some of the other uh, folks within the industry, names you may uh, recognize that have agreed to be contributors and supporters, uh, Lee Lambert, uh, Peter Taylor, Laura Bernard, Lindsay Scott, of course, from PMO Flash Mob, uh, Simon Harris, Rich Maltzman, Ruth Pierce. Uh, Cora Systems, Keyed In, Jason Westland, Deb Hildebrand from Learn Agile, Kieran Bondell, Rami Kabini, Kajo Karana from Singapore, and, and many, many more uh, are joining our global list of supporters to be contributors uh, within the platform. So I'm super excited. I'm glad that this day has come. We've put a lot of work into this. Um, this is just the beginning. And uh, we're excited to see where it goes. It's a community site. So we may have built the platform, but it's up to the community to provide the direction with our advisory board of where we go with this. Uh, So if there's features out there today you don't see, just let us know. That's what we're here for, to build a community site that you can all enjoy. All right, enough about the PMO leader, although I don't know if I'll ever stop talking about it. Uh, And let's get on to Billy. Let's shine the spotlight on you, Billy. I'm super excited to have you with us. Um, and you've had um, an exciting 2020 as a uh, as you were introduced to the world on the global stage as a TED speaker. Can you share a little bit about that experience. Thank you very much. Interesting that you say have a very exciting 2020, and you are very right. Despite the difficulties that we face, the challenges, especially the world, the global pandemic. I was privileged to actually find opportunities within that. And one of them, which is the biggest 
opportunity I got was to become a TED speaker. Now, what's interesting is I have always been a TED advocate and a TED follower for many years. And I always dreamt to stand on that red dot one day. Little did I know that I was going to get that opportunity through PMI. So PMI reached out to its members to ask them about the stories they had to share with the world. And I thought at that moment, I was ready to tell my story. And my story is a very personal one, but it applies project management principles and values. In a nutshell, I have a son who will now be turning five in a few months. He was born and encountered an accident during birth. He ran out of oxygen. And seven months later, he was diagnosed with cerebral palsy, a condition that affects muscle movement and balance. This is brain damage. And that was a shock of my life, of my wife's life, our family's lives. We had never experienced such a thing. And in the midst of that big challenge, the gigantic challenge before us, we were all over the place. We were depressed. We cried until we accepted the situation and tried to dive deeper into the knowledge that we have to try and help the situation. And the little bit of my background is that I started off as a telecoms engineer 16 years ago and then transitioned into a computer scientist. I enjoyed doing a lot of software development. I did much of it in my middle part of my career. And then eventually I ventured into business, uh, strategic planning in, in business, and then merged it with project management. What was fascinating was that I was able to pick pieces from my programming to try and help our son. You know, they said desperate measures, uh, desperate situations calls for desperate measures. I dug deeper into the knowledge that I had. And this is a conversation that we've had before, George, to say, if we can't apply our education into real life scenarios, then we are only informed and not educated. So I try to use the agile methodology and my programming skills to try and raise his kid because we needed to teach him new skills. He didn't even know how to recognize his own, his own body. And we were taught he, will, he was not, not, not going to sit and we should just accept him the way he is. But I always refuse to accept situations because I believe we were all born to solve these challenges. And once these challenges come our way, it's up to us to actually dig deeper into our innovative and creative minds, apply solutions, because we were all born to solve solutions at any given level. And that's the definition of leadership from my side. So that's the story. And Ted gave me an opportunity and PMI to actually deliver a story, which is now has been uploaded on, on the Ted page, as well as YouTube. It's very exciting how, how influential and impactful this talk has become. Now I'm receiving a lot of calls, a lot of messages from all over the world. People asking me, how we did it and have been exchanging notes. And for me, this is purpose because this is the whole reason why I decided to, to tell a story because nothing was built for itself. This story is no longer my story. It's not my son's story. It's for the next person to listen to, get hope from it, or even do much better on top of that. So that's how I got the TED opportunity job. Well, and I think it also points out, and same with this show, it's what we've learned doing the show over the years is we all share similar stories. We all have children. Some of us, uh, our children have disabilities, and it may not be the same disability as your son, but you you want to do something to help them overcome their disability. And wh- how do you do that where if we're not a doctor or a or uh, a physical therapist, or, or our background's not in that space, and we do have skills, as you mentioned. Right, my son had one of my sons has a uh, math disability, um, and I was in an accelerated math class, so it was always a challenge for me to understand how he could have a disability. And trying to use a kanban board to build 
activities that he could use to be able to coordinate and try to improve on his math skills. And so we all use our personal experiences to try to help overcome, um, but not all of us have the courage to step out and share that story like you did. Um, and now I think you're starting to see some of the benefits, as you mentioned, around the world with people reaching out to you of, of they have a similar story, right? Um, yes. And, and, and that's very, that's very exciting joy, if you ask me. Amazing story that you taught that you've been able to use the Kanban board. Look at how amazing an array of tools and, you know, processes that we have on hand that we can apply to actually ameliorate certain challenging situations. And just like I said before, our stories are not really our stories, but they are here to be told to help the next person because nothing was created for itself. That's that's my belief. And the most exciting thing, I, I'm, I'm able to resonate with what you're saying, is that it's not even for us to really change or reverse the, the, the situation, but it's for us to create an enabling environment. At the end of the day, these children, it's, it's like on, on, on a project management team, you need to create an enabling environment for your team to perform. You'll be amazed how much talent your team harnesses. But then if you try and fix them, the way we try and do with our kids, you know, we tell them, stop doing this, do that, do that. You know, we try and program them and fix them into a certain corner. We then deprive them of flourishing and becoming the best version of themselves. But then if we sit back and just, realize that let me let me try a Kanban uh, a board can it work for for my son like, like we did as well let me let me try to do uh, this type of methodology on my son and you see them actually flourish on their own and your role there is just to create an enabling environment and I think this cuts across every level of leadership and every uh, level of organization you you may think of it's just about creating an enabling environment for creativity and innovation, and then members just flourish and grow by themselves. Yeah, you know, it's you know within our purpose-driven PMO framework, the third gear is empower your people. And too often, as leaders, right, we think that we are the ones who are empowered, and we have to control. But the reality is, as you just pointed out, right, is when we give the power to the masses below us. That's actually leadership, right? It's the elevation of our own team members or our children or our family or our coworkers. Empowerment is such an important gift, right? And and when I think of your story and right, I, I watched your your TED talk um, during the PMI event, and thank you to PMI for putting on that event. There were so many great talkers and uh, speakers. Uh, I think Danielle Torley is going to be joining us uh, later this year as well. Uh, who spoke during that um, event. But what struck me was how you and your wife and the physical therapist were all empowering your son to the point at the end of the talk, there we get to see him running in the backyard and playing soccer. Uh, what a powerful visual that was to your story, uh, to be able to see that progress, not from what what you did, although you contributed, right? It's what he did because he became empowered. How, how, what was that feeling like as, as a parent to be able to see his progress from what he was able to accomplish? It's every day, every day that we leave is an exciting moment for us because every day that we wake up is a possibility for us. And this is why I love Agile. You know, agile approach to life or to everything that we do is that it allows us to address our big challenges. You know, eat an elephant in little pieces. And when you do that, you you then shy away from getting intimidated by this big challenge before you. You concentrate on the little springs that we just want to activate his finger. It's very easy and manageable to just concentrate on the finger and become as creative as we can be just to activate the finger than to think about his mobility in hope. We want him to stand all of a sudden. So that has been a groundbreaking uh, experience for me and my wife to just be able to address 
our challenges with our sand in little springs. And eventually, even now, it's, it's progressive elaboration. We don't even know how much we've done because we are now looking forward to the next step. Because as I'm speaking to you, we have the next challenge now. We can't place it into a typical school because our society is not very, uh, it's, it's not very integrated and we have limitations, gaps in terms of capacity in teachers. So these are the challenges that we continue to face. And so you reach a stage where you now think to say, if you can't find a door to knock on, then you have to build one yourself, mm. create that opportunity for yourself. So now we are thinking of just building a school that will integrate special needs children with a typical kid so that we build this world that accepts, you know, the special needs children and does not discriminate against them. Because when you, when you look at the world today, you, you will always dis- discriminate against something you're not aware of. Bullies are born out of that. You've never seen a person in their uniqueness. And we all, when you see them, when you're already a grown-up person, you make jokes out of them and you will bully them. But when you grow up to understand that there's this part of life as well, then you will become more embracing as a typical person. And this is the approach that we are taking with my wife. So to answer your question, every day is exciting for us. Just seeing him move is very exciting for us because every achievement, every milestone that he attains is, is like a miracle to us. It's, it's like a miracle to us. And we, we take time to celebrate the little victories because it's those little victories that, that are usually far away from excellence that add up to these gigantic, magnificent results that we then share with the world. Well, and I think another part of the story that's important, right, is certainly it's the story of the, and the journey that your family has been through with your son. But part of that is the family, right? And it's, you have another child, right? That is part of that journey as well, because oftentimes we lose, sometimes the spotlight doesn't get shown on the other children and, and they're in the background, but but not necessarily the case with you, right? The involvement of of the total family as part of this has been critical. True. It has been very critical and uh, it was very difficult to try and balance that when we had the second child because, you know, you were trying so much and paying every attention to this special needs child because he needs all the attention. But then you realize as a parent, you need to strike a balance. You don't have to neglect the other person. So the easiest way for us was to integrate him into the routines and into the whole uh, picture. We had formed, we still have an agile team around, the team of therapists around Luwuto. We have physiotherapists, we have uh, hydrotherapists, we now have the neuromovement therapists, we have the occupational therapists, and we're discovering new uh, therapies that are available to help him as well. So this is a solid team that we have, self-driven, self-directing team. We trust the team and we get the, the views, their views, and we we... We really enjoy working together and the, our daughter just fitted into this team so well and she accelerated to actually be the leader of the team because she now does more training for him because he's challenged by the sister and he, he wants to be the man, you know, the <laughs> ego of a man. So he, he always wants to challenge the sister and he ends up doing a lot of things. And I guess it's the right moment. You see, I'm smiling very much, Joe. It's, it's very exhilarating that you set a date. This date will go uh, in the history to be very special to me and my family because we just had our third born son today. Oh, congratulations. Oh, I did. Yeah. Oh, we wouldn't have had you on the show today. I mean, congratulations. That's amazing news. Uh, so literally yeah. seven hours ago, you just your family brought in a, another child. Another child. So oh, we my have God. three now. Well, I guess that's another first, right? Our, our, our first show that comes on the day that, that uh, a, a child joins the family. I'm so happy yes. for, for you and your wife uh, and, and all of your family. That's such exciting news. Uh, Thank you, Joe. Jeez, I don't know where to go after that, right? I mean, it's, boy, we've, we've had a lot of firsts, but never one of those. So thank you for staying on schedule and joining us. What an impressive uh, commitment that you're shown to to be with us today. Uh, but after the show, definitely run back to your family and be with them because they need your support uh, as a dad, of course. 
Um, Fantastic. Thanks. You know, uh, you know, with something else I didn't know about you, and you're halfway around the world, right? So every time we connect, I learn something new. Um, and I can't wait for all the lessons I learn in the coming years that I get from our, our connection. Um, but you're now working with music uh, in project management to build, uh, I believe, instruction and courses together. Help me share with everybody what you're doing with that work as well. Awesome. Thank you very much, Joel. One of the talents that I have is music. I'm able to compose music and arrange it and just be able to sing. But this is something that I have suppressed for many years because of my professional career. I want to be the corporate project manager. But, you know, recently after rediscovering myself, I realized that, you know, we've been gifted with talents that we are never going to utilize in one lifetime. And it's for us to actually use those as tools to communicate the cause that we are running with. And right now my passion is project management because I believe project management drives, you know, value addition to organizations, to nations and to the world at large. And so I started thinking how I could connect those two, you know, to, to deliver something unique to the world. I love to be innovative and creative because most of the times theories are sometimes boring and people don't want to listen to that. So I found a correlation in music with project management and leadership. When you talk about music, you think about this universal language. You vibe to the drums of, you know, from my country, Joe, without even you understanding the rhythm of, of, of the drums. I will vibe to the type of music from the United States without even me understanding, you know, the, the arrangement of the instruments simply because of the power that music has. But then in those notes and chords is all the management lessons, all the project management lessons. There's leadership, you know, at play when, when people are able to come together playing different instruments, but then they arrive to produce one harmonized sound, which is sweet to the ears of the people. And that is what leadership is all about, is having different talented people bringing their skill sets. And when you put them together, if there's a vision you know, that everybody understands that we're going to play in, in, in the key of E, then you all play in a different ways, but then you harmonize, you form those synergies and produce one sound, which is one goal, which is one vision, and that's project management, and that's leadership. And so in the previous event, Tate at PMI, there was Jonathan who played the violins during the, the break, one of the breaks. Mm -hmm. I was blown away. You'll be amazed at how, how much I was blown away. I followed Jonathan. I started listening to the pieces. And one day I just picked up a call and reached out to him. I pitched this idea to him to say, how can we work together going forward? This idea I have. He bought into it. He was very excited. And now you should be expecting one of the biggest and most, most innovative and creative masterclass on project management and leadership using music. So we're going to bring different cultures together. He has American and Taiwanese culture in him. I, I'm bringing the African culture and then we are going to join sounds together. But at the end of the day, we're going to preach unification. We are going to preach leadership. We are also going to preach, you know, we're going to talk to, to teams that are now distributed the way we are working these days with COVID-19. People are all over the world and harnessing different cultures. But then if the goal and the vision is very clear and people are actually allowed to express themselves, to bring out the skills and creative side, then we can achieve greater goals together than we have ever imagined to solve the most difficult problems that we've faced in this world. You know, I don't know if that makes sense to you, Joe. It, it makes complete sense. Uh, and again, in, in the world of ironies, uh, each year I try to pick one or two topics that I speak about uh, as I do my speaking tours. And one of the topics I have for 2020, it's, it's called High Voltage Project Management to the Tunes of ACDC. So for, uh, so for me, wow. I grew up as ACDC being an influence to my musical uh, interests, and they were just part of my career, my youth, right, as growing up. 
And one day I was out on a long walk. I'm listening to uh, ACDC in my ears. And as they're singing the songs, you it, it, people will think, how in the world do you connect ACDC and project management, right? But it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll, right? Yeah. It, we can relate to that. You aren't instantly a PMO leader. It's a long way to get to that spot if you have to go through all the stages to get there. And there's this connection to music and the rhythm and the beat that you mentioned. So do, when you ask, do I understand? Absolutely, I understand to the point wow. that I'm already working on a, uh, a speaking session that would go around this. Not a full training program and course like you're putting together, uh, but still it's an interest of mine as well to be able to take music and be able to connect it into what we're doing with project management, right? After all, we, we always hear the analogy when someone says, well, I don't understand project management. Can you explain it better to me? And you say, well, you know how an orchestra works, right? They're the conductor of the orchestra, right? So there's that, uh, that built-in natural amazing instinct. You, amazing you've talked about analogies and metaphors, we, which is uh, one of the biggest tools that we use in, in, in agile methodology because it's much easier to communicate a vision to the people or an objective to the people. And exciting that you are also musical. I might be thinking of a backup vocalist no. for that masterclass. Maybe Joe. <laughs> Let me see. I'm not musical, I, but I enjoy music, right? I, I don't want to ruin your track with me singing, uh, but I love music, right? It, it moves my soul to listen to music. Um, I, I'm not talented enough to sing or play an instrument, but I am talented enough to recognize how it moves me. Right. And to understand how we all can be moved by that. So, man, I can't wait to hear what you guys are going to put together. It's going to be super exciting. Fantastic. Um, amazing how. So as you were talking, I'm just thinking, if he's not musical, then where can we place him? And I'm thinking at the end of the show, we might just ask you to give us feedback because feedback is everything to to everything. I, uh, any way I can be participatory in that, I would love it. Uh, so tell us more about the timing of this. I know you said you're you're working on this. Is this something at the early stages? Are you? Do you have a any sort of timeline you're working towards? What what can we expect with that? Absolutely. So we we have a timeline. As I said, it's going to pan out to be a project management lesson as well. So the way we're running it, we're running it as a project. We have a, a roadmap, a rough roadmap because we are using agile methodology. So we're not going into detailed planning. What we have is for us to have this song first and the sounds that we want this song to depict and to have. And because we want to embellish the story that is already there and impacting on people's lives. So we are calling this project Lubuto. And the song is going to, is going to, Characterized, it's going to be characterized by the strength that Lubuto and many other children in the world living with special needs, you know, depicts to the to to the world the courage that they have to try a hundred times as much as a typical child to do what they do. Imagine the amount of effort that they put in, and they need to be celebrated. So this is what the vision of a song is. We're going to make this song. And we have a timeline of February to finish to complete the, this song. We will probably publish it towards the end of February. It will be on, 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 on social media. And we'll be glad to see if we can actually bring PMI and TED uh, on board because we met at, at, at a, at a TED, TED at PMI event with Jonathan. It will be great to to just partner with uh, these entities once more because they created this bigger stage for all of us to send out. And once that is done, the next stage or the next iteration is going to be in August. Hopefully the COVID-19 situation, now we're talking risk management, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, goes down, then we will be able to fly Jonathan into Zambia. Should it fail to work, then we'll go for a contingency plan, maybe do a virtual event. So this is where we are. Our ultimate goal is to have a masterclass in August and have a song, the champion song, next month. That's amazing. And of course, with the PMO Leader site as a platform uh, where we're yes. offering professional development, we certainly want to make sure that we have that out there on that site for everyone as well. 
and super excited to watch that journey uh, as you continue on that path. You know, as you, you mentioned, of course, uh, the name of the song, your son's name. Um, I didn't ask uh, your new child, your new son, have you given him a name yet? Uh, and what is his name? Yes, so the name is the name is Malumbo. So Malumbo is a local name that means praise. And his middle name is Maverick. So Maverick means an independent mind. So that's that's Malumbo Maverick Mwate. Well, welcome to the world. You've got uh, a great role model as a dad to help uh, provide a beacon and a guiding light along the journey. I'm, I'm excited to hear his story as well and, and watch that unfold over time. Uh, I don't. Well, thank you for your kind words. Uh, you're welcome. You, you mentioned COVID-19 and you mentioned PMI. Uh, certainly, we're all within the project management uh, community and industry, and PMI plays a large part of everything that we do. Um, and, you know, not that you didn't have enough going on, you also helped start the first PMI chapter in Zambia it is during the middle of a pandemic, right? Yes. <laughs> T- tell that, us that, that story. That was a challenging journey. I, I enjoy leadership. I love leadership because I believe it's the only way that we get to influence and impact on people's lives and change humanity at the end of the day. And every person has this leadership level in them only when they decide to cultivate it. So I decided to cultivate my leadership from a long time ago, and this is what I've been working on. So every time I see an opportunity for me to, which aligns with my purpose, I jump on and just seize the moment to to serve the world. So there was a call for us to establish the PMI chapter in Zambia. We had a lot of people getting certified, but then there was no opportunity for the members to actually have a hub where they could come together and just share ideas and just enjoy this PMI uh, family. So when that call came up, I jumped on without blinking and oh boy, didn't we face a great challenge. Some of the board members, I haven't even met them physically. We had to transition so quickly to be meeting virtually to be able to come up with a strategic plan for for the potential chapter then, to be able to share ideas and just work remotely, but then using the tools available to us, such as Teams, Zoom, and Google Docs, just to share the same documents. And our skills actually, you know, went up during this period. And some of the challenges that we faced were what value do we then sell to the potential members? Because it was very easy to say we'll be having conferences, you know, when you go for a symposium, people enjoy that. We go for a breakout session, but now that has been taken away from us by COVID-19. It's virtual, virtual, virtual. And when you talk of digital acceleration, you also, you can't take away the the topic of um, of uh, digital divide. Some people can't transition so easily because they're not conversant with the technologies available. And so when you sell an idea to them or you sell something that you think is valuable to them and to them, it actually appears to be a challenge, then it becomes very difficult for you as a leader, you know, to deal with that change management. So this is something that we've been able to deal with. We've, we're still dealing with the change management. We are utilizing more of the WhatsApp group for quick interactions. We are now more active on LinkedIn because this is where our members are. But to say that we figured out everything, I would be lying because we are still learning every day. We are failing lamentably in some areas and then picking up and just learning. So this leadership role during this catastrophe has been very exciting because I have learned to be an adaptive leader as well as a resilient leader. So it is very exciting to be on board, to be part of this First board, you know, we could you could call us a, a COVID nineteen PMI <laughs> chapter baby. <laughs> and you're, I believe, vice president on the board. Oh, I forgot to mention that. Yes, so I was voted in as the vice vice president for the for the chapter, and I'm I'm just so excited to 
you know, to work with our common values, our common uh, goal as a, as a chapter, to just give value, to give back to our members, to make sure that our members enjoy, you know, all the opportunities that they can enjoy even during these difficult times. And one of the, one of the pros that I've noticed actually is that we're now able to meet more people globally. Look at us here, we're talking, you know, had it not been for COVID-19, I don't think I was going to be as active as I am on LinkedIn, on social media, and I may not have bumped into you. So there's so many advantages or positives that are coming out of it. And I always tell people to say that let's concentrate on the positives and they will eventually just suppress the few negatives that we have. And, and of you know, uh, speaking to my own lack of knowledge of uh, Zambia uh, and the region over there, this is the first PMI chapter, of course. How how hard will it be in in times when COVID's gone uh, and people can get back together again? Is it common to have organizations like a PMI chapter where people come together in a professional setting? Because part of this show, which is great, is I get to talk to somebody from Zambia and. And in two weeks, I talked to somebody from Australia. Um, and last year was India and the UK and Canada. We're, we're talking to people around the world. And we have an opportunity to allow these guests to share with the world what life is like in their country that may be the same or it may be different than others and uh, have to enjoy. So, listen, we have a PMI chapter here in Phoenix. And I have attended events in person. and I've attended events virtual. It's very easy for me to be able to do that. You now have a new chapter in, in Zambia. Yeah, of course, you haven't been able to be in person yet. But what is that like? What is a taste of Zambia that helps us understand life there that we can relate to? Thank you so much. So the, the life in Zambia is that of, you know, people enjoy connecting with each other. Just by the way we greet each other, you see, we enjoy. So you say handshake, that is prolonged up and down, and then you shake your hands because in that moment, you're connecting with the, with the next person. So this is the culture that we have, you know, very friendly people, very welcoming people. This is something that is just embedded in all of us as Zambians. And now came COVID-19. Mm. You know, we've had partial lockdowns. And as I'm speaking to you right now, we have the new spike in COVID-19 cases. And we are probably headed into the next uh, lockdown. And physical meetings may not be uh, possible very soon, meaning we might have to continue with the online meetings. Now, what's interesting is that since this, this chapter was chatted during COVID-19, we've learned all the virtual skills and it's the only thing that our members know. The only thing our members know is this virtual platform. We've been running monthly events, monthly webinars, just to engage with our audience. Interesting that you spoke about Lee Lambert. He's a very good friend of mine and he shares a birthday with our daughter. He presented on one of the, of the monthly webinars. And so people have acclimatized themselves to the situation. They are adapting to this new life. It's, it's the new normal now. Things will never get back to the old normal. But should we get back to the physical meetings? I think it's something that we'll be exhilarated about because we enjoy just meeting and brainstorming and just exchanging ideas. And one of our, our, our big goals that we have is to have the annual conferences. So this will be the PMI annual conference where we just break away, we collocate and have very pertinent topics to be talked about, topics that will align with the national development plan how project management and uh, PMO would help to transform organizations and the nation at large because we all need that. In Zambia, we do not have a framework, like a national framework, project management national framework. I don't know how it works in the United States, but I know in Botswana, they have a national uh, project management framework. So it becomes very easy. It's like they have this big PMO that manages all the... Um, all the institutions or all the organs of the government running projects. And so they are very efficient and very effective. They have a value stream that is enhanced. And this is a vision that I have for Zambia. And I hope many other countries, especially in Africa, to tap into that and be able to 
look at the value at the end of the project rather than just successfully executing a project. You know, let me just quick, uh, give a quick example. Like building roads, you know, road constructions are a great thing. But then if a road takes five years, you know, to be implemented, you may have actually lost out on many things. You know, you bring in cost. You people who've been attached to that project who may have been released to actually attend to other projects. You're talking about cost. You're talking about risk. Maybe you know where we're going with um, with the global warming and the climate change. Maybe the type of material that we are using for the roads may not be relevant in the next uh, five years. But then, if you take ten years doing that road, you can't come and say it has been successfully commissioned. No. You know, physically it's there, but then is it really adding value? And this is a mindset that I really want organizations and the nation to embrace. And we have a machinery to use now, which is PMI Zamin Chapter, which is going to have avenues into government and other big institutions that play big roles to turn the tires of the economy in our country. So you say you have a vision that this will happen. And, and one thing I've learned about you in the the brief encounters we've had is that when you have a vision, you have a way of making them come true. So I, I cannot wait to see that you make that vision come true as well. You had talked about uh, during, during a couple of your comments, you had mentioned uh, your purpose uh, and how things align to your purpose. And when they do, how that uh, energizes you. Can you elaborate on that more to to help us understand your purpose and, and what that means to you. A, a example, right? The PMO squad, what I helped create was the purpose driven PMO because purpose is at the, at my core, right? Empowering people to deliver results is who I am, right? I don't have to be that. I don't have to create that. It just is who I am. And that's what my company does. And that's what we help people do. So when I hear someone such as yourself talk about purpose, it's that kindred spirit. I think that we have of, that's how we can align because we both have that same common core belief system. And so share a little bit more about your purpose. Thank you very much. And I'm, I'm smiling as you were talking, but it was like you were talking about my purpose and <laughs> I'm not fascinated again at the same time or amused because, you know, we, we, we were drawn to each other probably because we have common values, you know, shared values and these values viewed up into purpose. I, I am driven, I have passion to actually empower people or help them become the best version of themselves. So at the core of my purpose is leadership. I have a gift of just sitting down with someone, regardless of the position or status in, 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 the, in, in society, and just be able to draw out you know, the value that they hold inside them, and then be able to create an enabling environment for them. It may not even be me per se to help them fully, but then I'll be able to connect them to the person that I can actually help them the most. Let's say I know Joe will be the best person to help you in this area. So I'm this person to just understand someone's um, direction and gifts and also just help them also realize their purpose. Because when you talk about purpose, you know, it's, it's quite a, a broad conversation. But then I bring it down to, to values. When you understand your set of values, they will drive your purpose easily. Because every day that you live, you question yourself. Out of these values that I have, am I actually living up to these values? You know, a lot of people run in this world living up to other people's values. And they wonder how they can't just get that intrinsic satisfaction or happiness is because they're trying to be a replica of another person. But then the moment you understand what your uh, value system is, and this is an ongoing process. It's not something that you just figure out. You know, you, you keep learning yourself. The moment you do that, then it becomes very easy to, to, to lead a purpose-driven life. So when you give me a call to say, do you want to be on a team, on an advisory team for, for this PMO great uh, leadership platform? For me, it was yes and yes instantly because it yeah. aligns with my purpose. This helps me drive, you know, my passion to reach out to many people and bring other people on this platform for them to get their values out of their lives. So this is how 
I align with people and just be able to ride along with them if we we cross paths in terms of our values and our goals. You know, as um, thinking back to the last conversation about the PMI chapter and tying in this this conversation about empowerment and purpose, Priya Patra from India was a former guest of ours, and she had started up last year the PMI Chapter Exchange Program, where she is now working with PMI chapters around the world to come together and collaborate. And I don't know if Zambia is included in that list of chapters or not, uh, but certainly after the show, I'll, I'll make an introduction to help empower you and your chapter uh, to connect with Priya to see if there's an opportunity. She has uh, chapters from, from Africa, from Asia, from the EU, uh, the United States. Uh, they had 10 chapters, and I know they're looking to expand into 2021. And this is the power of our community, right? Our project management community that we can connect with people globally, that we can impact people globally, uh, and yeah. that, but we can act locally, right? Um, and, That's amazing. Yes. Uh, and I'm glad that, that you're a part of that. Um, you know, listen, I, I have much more to discuss with you, but today is a special day for you and your family. And I don't want to continue to hold you. I already feel guilty for having you on my show now. Uh, but I want you to get back to your family. I want you to, to celebrate the new life that you have brought into this world. And I want to say thank you uh, for joining us, for contributing to uh, the PMO Leader website. Uh, but more important, thank you for allowing me to become part of your life uh, and to become somebody that we're working together and collaborating with. So thank you so much for all of that, Billy. Thank, thank you so much, Joe. And I really appreciate to be the first from Africa on your show and to come on this show with the great news that we just had a baby is such an amazing thing. And what I would love to share with the rest of the world in my closing remarks is that we need to be comfortable with innovative failure. And why, what I mean is that we shouldn't be afraid of failure. This is something that I've learned, Joe, recently, and such a powerful, you know, philosophy. You should always try to try, because if you don't try, you will never get an opportunity to fail. And if you don't get an opportunity to fail, you will never get an opportunity to actually learn. So just try and fail better all the time. At the end of the day, we are all just finding our way through this life. The challenges of this life have never been mastered by not one of us. And memory is not sufficient enough to deal with the challenges that we have. That's the reason why we need to try and fail, because that's the only way we accelerate the creative mind of ourselves. And so I'm very excited to be joining you on this platform and on this journey. I'm ready to learn a lot of things. I'm ready to fail with you and learn with you and make this world a better world. Thanks so much, uh, Billy. How can people get in touch with you? How can they see your TED Talk? What are, what's the best way for people to get in touch with you? Thank you very much. The first is find me on LinkedIn, Billy S. Mwape. Um, I'm on LinkedIn. And the easiest way is for them to follow your page because you tagged me on one of the posts, so it will yes. be easy for them to find me. I'm also on Facebook as Billy S. Mwape. And then I'm also on, on, on Instagram and Twitter as Billy.Mwape. So they can find me on those. And for my, TED, for my TED Talk, for those of you who would like to listen to my TED Talk, it is on the TED Talk page. When you go to TED Talk page, homepage, just type in Billy Samia Mwape, you will find my talk there. Or when you go to YouTube, you type in Billy Samia Mwape, you find my talk there. Or you find search for innovative ways of raising uh, special needs children, you will find my talk there. But the easiest way is to find it through Joe's platform. Well, thank you again, Billy, for joining us. I, I highly, highly recommend everybody go out and listen to Billy's TED Talk. Um, if it doesn't change your life, it at least make you think differently about life and how what we do at work 
really can influence what we do at home and vice versa. Uh, it's a really powerful uh, session and important, I think, for all of us to hear. So thank you uh, for sharing that talk with us and sharing today's talk with us, Billy. I appreciate that. Of course, thank you to all of our listeners, right? If we didn't have listeners, we wouldn't have a show. Uh, and thank you to everyone. Please be sure to go out and visit projectmanagementofficehours.com to check out all of our shows and all of our upcoming shows. We have a great lineup of guests already confirmed uh, through March. Uh, Amira, Amira Mahari from Australia will be joining us next. Bruce Gay follows that. Fatima Abuchi from Australia. Bill Dow and Frank Saladis uh, is confirmed as well. So we're booked all the way through March. Um, and we're working to extend that lineup. As I mentioned, Danielle Torley, another PMI TED Talker, I believe will be joining us later in the year as well. So a reminder, we're live, of course, but these shows are being recorded. So we're going to release this as the Project Management Office Hours podcast on your favorite podcast platform, uh, whether it's Apple Podcast, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Spreaker, or whatever. Please listen to it there. And of course, thank you to our sponsors, the PMO Squad. Visit www.thepmosquad to learn more about the Purpose Driven PMO and all of their project management services. So that's it for now. Office hours are closed. Until next time, I'm PMO Joe, and you've been listening to Project Management Office Hours. Thanks for listening to another episode of Project Management Office Hours with PMO Joe. You're not alone in your project management journey. We're here to help you achieve your goals. Subscribe to Project Management Office Hours on your favorite podcast platform to catch all of our episodes and hear industry leaders share their story and secrets to success.